Welcome everyone. My name is Tom Fitzpatrick. I'm a podiatrist and today I'll be talking to you about diabetic foot care in the Pacific. I work for Motivation Australia, a non-for-profit organisation based in South Australia. Uh, and we work to support and strengthen health services in Asia and the Pacific. Uh, here you can see partners in the highlands of Papua New Guinea on an outreach trip. And there are challenges such as it might be multiple days walk to the nearest health service, uh, floods, rivers that require boats to cross, um, or a plane trip to the nearest health services, and many challenges for people to gain access to a service that most of us aren't used to here in Australia. Uh, here you can see a partner in Tonga in a recently developed rehabilitation clinic, supporting a person to walk after being recently fitted with a prosthesis. And here is training being delivered in the Diabetic Foot Care Centre in Kiribati. Our goals at Motivation Australia, uh, our first goal is we're looking to collaborate with and enable our Pacific partners to halve the rate of avoidable amputations by 2030. So that's a really big, ambitious goal that we're going to explore throughout today. We're also looking to double the number of people accessing rehabilitation and assistive technology services. We're working to empower women and girls and increase gender equity. And finally, we're looking to develop local emerging leaders. And you can see here we work um, with a big presence in the Pacific. So all these countries listed in green are Pacific Island countries. Many of these countries we started working in as early as 2007, which has helped us gain a deeper understanding of the culture, the context, the health services, and also to strengthen our relationships with partners in these countries. And our background started initially in wheelchair service provision uh, and mobility. And in the Pacific, there is a much smaller population and therefore also a smaller workforce or, and health workforce. Uh, so here in Australia and New Zealand, there's a combined health workforce of around 700,000 health workers. Um, whereas in the Pacific, they really don't have those numbers. So many people that are working in wheelchairs will also work closely uh, with people in rehabilitation, um, prosthetics and orthotics. And from there, we were working closely with many people who had experienced amputation. And naturally, we progressed to then work in diabetic foot care. So in 2013, the World Health Organization Western Pacific Regional Office hosted a meeting with partners from the World Health Organization, the International Society for Prosthetics and Orthotics, Motivation Australia, and partners from the Solomon Islands, Fiji, and Marshall Islands. And together, this group outlined the priorities for diabetic foot care and what to work towards. And from these priorities, we developed a keep moving training package, which was then ran in Fiji, the Marshall Islands, Samoa, Kiribati, Tonga, and the Solomon Islands. And over the years, as we've delivered this training, it has been refined and evolved to fit the context of each of these countries, and also to work with the local ministries of health and medical services to develop diabetic foot care protocols relevant to that context. So to give an idea of the problems and challenges in the Pacific for diabetic foot care, um, the International Diabetes Federation in 2019 identified the top 10 countries with the highest prevalence of diabetes, and seven out of 10 of these countries are in the Pacific. And non-communicable diseases, so diabetes, cardiovascular disease, uh, all NCDs, and they represent the single largest cause of premature deaths in Pacific Island countries, according to the World Health Organization. And these diseases account for 75% of all deaths um, across the Pacific Island countries. People are developing foot wounds, seeking medical assistance late, and often attend with infected, necrotic, severe wounds that often lead to avoidable amputation or death. And an example of this is, so in the surgical ward in the Solomon Islands, the number of inpatients is up to 60% that have diabetic foot wounds or recently undergone amputation. So 60% of the surgical ward is basically diabetic foot care patients in a severe condition. And here's a video developed by our partners in the Solomon Islands to build on that understanding of the context. Hello and greetings to you all from the Solomon Islands. My name is Roslyn. My name is Sharon Juvia. My name is Angelina. I was enrolled as a registered nurse. I have recently graduated as an orthotist. I am currently serving as a registered nurse at the National Diabetes Center. 
Solomon Island, we comprises of nine provinces, which we have different languages, different cultures, different religious beliefs, and different races. Solomon Island has been recorded the nine highest prevalence last year in 2019 by the International Diabetic Federation. Patients with diabetic foot are prone to nerve damage, circulation problems, and infections leading to serious foot problems. There are increased stresses in the families already and depression in the family themselves, hopelessness, anxiety, and decrease in social activities. As an orthotist, helping diabetic patients is one of my key roles. These uh, services helps them to regain their abilities that they have lost due to their condition. To help them actively participate in the acti activities of daily living. Our country will need more assistive devices to mobilize for our daily needs which will be more costly for our nation. Economically, there is low incomes. And for general well-being of a person living with diabetes, it involves other NGOs, organizations like governments, healthcare professionals, family members, individual, community as a whole. Therefore, appropriate diabetic food care from specialized Diabetic food care professional is more crucial to prevent avoidable lower limb infection, amputation, or even death. Thank you for listening and watching. Thank you. Target to mass. God bless. Thank you, Rosalind, Angelina, and Sharon. Uh, and from there, that, that brings the question, what can we do? Um, and so some in a more positive light and a, a good note, there is a lot we can do to make a, a positive change. So the International Diabetes Federation in 2019 also state that comprehensive diabetic foot care with complications, risk assessment and foot care based on prevention, education and support from a multidisciplinary team can reduce foot complications and amputations by up to 85%. Um, and this is supported by a statement from the World Health Organization that 40 to 60% decrease in amputation rates during the last 10 to 15 years seen in countries with strong diabetic foot management services. So really quite positive notes to take away from what we can do and what a difference we will make. So for diabetic foot care, our strategy, as we acknowledged, is it is a very big problem and a very ambitious goal that we've laid out, and it's not something that can be done with any one team on their own. It will require a strong team and a lot of resources. So we are looking to collaborate and broker partnerships that improve diabetes health outcomes. We're working to support and strengthen the capacity of local health services to prevent and manage diabetic foot wounds. And we're advocating for increased resources to national ministries of health, using, for example, um, promoting the evidence of economic savings and improved health outcomes um, associated with diabetic foot care. And on top of that, we're looking to educate and contribute to learning opportunities um, and create opportunities and career pathways within the diabetes sector. So here you can see a capacity assessment matrix, which we use in our approach, which these four pillars uh, assess essentially human resources, technical resources, service systems, and organizational culture. And by building all of these, it will affect the services that clients are able to access. Um, so you might think, how might we work together to make a difference? Um, if you have any questions or ideas how to collaborate or suggestions that you can offer, um, bring those ideas to the discussion panel, which I'll be joining after this, um, and we can discuss that further. But if you are interested in getting in touch, we are very enthusiastic to collaborate and broker partnerships and work with you. So please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, and I put my email here and the senior clinical advisor's email here as well, Lee Brentnell. Um, but thank you for listening, and I'll see you all at the discussion panel.